about it. It's 2023, yeah. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk. I'm here to talk to you about South Park, or more specifically, Kyle, and his relationship with his brother, Ike. I know some of you want me to talk about Kyle and Cartman. Don't worry, 2023 just started. We'll get there eventually. Now, most families in South Park are not that different from other adult animated sitcoms. They can all be stupid, crazy, or cuckoo banana cream pie. I mean, there was that one episode where, to protect their kids from getting kidnapped, they essentially kicked them out of the house, including Cher and BTW. You have to get out of here before we abduct you. Goodbye, son. Remember to eat right. However, I have talked myself to death about the worst parents in South Park, and while I have already talked about Sheila, I have yet to talk about her children. Now it's time for a little positivity. So let's discuss. In South Park, one of the five main families is the Brofloskis. There's the parents, Sheila and Gerald, and the boys, their biological son, Kyle, and their adopted son, Ike. The Brofloskis are notable for being the only Jewish people in town, even if certain episodes show that South Park has a synagogue and the seats are packed to the brims. And now I believe in 2004, the Jewish community needs to apologize for the death of Jesus. What? 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 Maybe they're out of towners. But whereas the older Broploskis get a ton of focus, and Kyle is a main character, Ike can often feel a little under the radar. A prop who does nothing more than act like a glorified trash can or a table. But why? I don't know, but it's worth a video. South Park is known for portraying the goods and bads of sibling relationships. It's Shelly and Stan, and their volatile pairing, or Kenny and Karen, and their heartwarming bond. But Kitty, what about Kenny's older brother, Kevin? <clears throat> We don't talk about Kevin, we never talk about Kevin. Tilda Swinton, I don't care, we don't need to talk about Kevin McCormick, but he does deserve an episode. Anyhow, Kyle and Ike are somewhere in the middle when it comes to siblings. They obviously love each other, and Ike idolizes his big brother, but sometimes they can end up getting into fights or petty squabbles. Thankfully, they will stand together when the need arises. In essence, they're like normal siblings. Probably the most normal in South Park. I immensely enjoyed this pairing. For me at least, it's pretty close to the relationship I have with my sibling. Anyhow, we first meet Kyle and his little brother in the pilot. Like I said, and I will probably keep repeating ad nauseum, Kyle loves his little brother but he isn't above teasing him or using him. In fact, the brothers play a fun little game together. Ready Ike? Kick the baby! Don't kick the baby. Kick the baby! <laughs> Come on, can't one of the boys do that Charlie Brown thing? That would be hilarious. Unfortunately, Ike gets kidnapped by visitors, and Kyle has to get him back. Otherwise, Sheila will be pissed to kingdom come. Damn it, he's still there! Uh, don't worry about him. No, dude, if something happens to him, my parents are gonna blame me! Clearly, Kyle doesn't see her when his Aunt Flo comes over. Kyle tries to find Ike and eventually meets with the visitors but they still take his little brother. But if you could find it in your hearts or whatever you have, to give my brother back to me sure would make my life brighter again. That was beautiful, dude. In response, Kyle tears them a new butthole, if they have one, because, I mean, they're aliens, who knows? You know what you like? You like your Thankfully, through some quick thinking, they are able to bring him home. Yes, and Hamlet is all about Laertes. I suppose by this point, you've noticed that Ike looks a little different from not only his brother, but the rest of the town. Forgive me for my racist comment, I obviously have a bias, and I'll take the two weeks' attention. But interestingly, Ike is not American, or even Coloradan. He's, he's <gasps> Canadian. <gasps> Oh, the horror. And he's <gasps> adopted. Ah! Oh, my Lana. Actually, funny story, like usual. Believe it or not, this was not always planned. And I hate to use the R word, but it's a uh, red. 
icon. Originally, all South Park babies were designed to look like Ike. Thanks to Reddit user Oscar Mayer Winner for pointing out how in Starve and Marvin, there's a baby that looks just like Ike when Cartman goes to Africa. However, after Terrence and Philip were turned into Canadian actors, not cartoon characters, the creators decided to make all Canadians resemble them. From then on, we got the joke that Canada was essentially an entirely separate species, and Ike retroactively joined them. Hey, at least he isn't a day walker. Several episodes, such as Christmas in Canada and Ike's Wee Wee, touch on his backstory. Ike was born as Peter Gintz to Harry and Elise, a Canadian couple. Unfortunately, this was after Canada was devastated by the Cola Wars and he was put up for adoption and renamed Ike Moisha. Rob Lasky. Okay, anybody else surprised that his real name isn't Isaac? Or is it just me? Kyle is not happy when he finds out. Not about this naming convention, but about their bond. <laughs> you mean to tell me that all this time I've been trying to protect Ike from having his fireman cut off and he's not even my real brother? What are you talking about? Dude, Ike isn't dead. He's in Nebraska. Oh yeah, I did not get into why. Kyle tried to hide Ike in order to keep him from getting circumcised. This was back when the boys acted like little boys, so thanks to misinformation, they believe a circumcision is the equivalent of chopping off Ike's firemen. They call it that because after the ceremony, they mounted over the fireplace. Sorry, that was a Spongebob reference, but according to Cartman, The fireman is very magical. If you rub his helmet, he spits in your ass. Just, there's a question that's always perplexed me about this episode in particular. How does Kyle not know what a bris is? Imagine being Catholic and not knowing what a baptism is. He's the Jewish one, and he had one himself, even if he was obviously too young to remember. Why, is it his birthday? No, it's his bris. What the hell is a bris? I don't know, but there's gonna be lots of food and a band. Wouldn't Sheila and Gerald explain it to him, or at least the specifics, or wouldn't he have questions? Or wouldn't he have seen one himself at least once? Eh. Kyle doesn't think that he should be helping Ike because he isn't his brother. All this time, look out for your little brother, Kyle. Take care of your little brother, Kyle. And he wasn't even really my little brother. Kyle, just because Ike is adopted doesn't make him any less your brother. Yeah, right. Rude. And for this, he gets grounded. Free butters. Then comes the day of the chopping. Sheila has invited Dr. Schwartz to act as Mo. Oh hell. Mo mo Wait, hold on a sec. Okay, Frazier says Moyle, so I'm gonna go with Moyle. I brought the normal cutting device, but then I remembered that Ike was Canadian, so I brought the right one. At least there's a little stencil. Before the party, Ike tries to convince Kyle to accept him as his brother, by reminding him of the good times. Oh, come Two, three, four, five. Oh, no, you don't. That isn't gonna work on me, Canadian. Kyle, come on. Don't make me get PC Principal. Oh, the little hat. Kyle, how can you say no to the little hat? It's your hat. Ike gets scared and, per his instinct, runs to his big brother. That's when Kyle returns to his senses. Ike. Ike. She got come on different mirror. At least until the doctor explains what really happens during a circumcision. We're not going to cut it off. We're just going to snip it so that it looks bigger. Oh, hey, that doesn't sound like a bad idea. Wait, I thought outside of religious reasons, you did it because John Harvey Kellogg said that it would keep boys from touching themselves. Hey, be glad they brought Dr. Schwartz. Kellogg performed the procedure on himself. Realizing he screwed up, Kyle is fine, and knowing it's gonna hurt, he's with his brother every step of the way. Ike, you're okay. Kyle ends the story by telling the boys what he learned today. It isn't about whose blood you have, it's about who you care about. Yeah, and that's why I feel like you guys are more than just friends. You're my family. 
Except for Cartman, naturally. Oh, don't worry, Kyle. In the future, you and Cartman become blood brothers. I am discussing that one day. However, Ike's Canadian heritage is not a one-off plot point. I might make another video on it, so I will try to limit the episodes I talk about here. But when they go there, they go there. In Christmas in Canada, Ike's birth parents show up during Hanukkah. Not to visit Ike for the holiday, but to take him back. You gave Ike up. You can't just change your mind. Changing your mind is a Canadian custom that we hold quite dear. The new Canadian Prime Minister has decreed that all adopted Canadians must be returned home. Which honestly has like a buttload of unfortunate implications when you really stop to think about it. Like these two seem nice, but there might be somebody else who's way worse. Don't make this any harder for Peter. Harder for Peter? And you two just blow in here and say you're gonna haul him back to Canada and we're being hard on Peter? We're prepared to go to court. Since they already did the immigration plotline with the quintuplets, Ike is forced to go. Gerald and Sheila are devastated, as is Kyle. Yes! Yes! No! Ike's not my little brother anymore? When the time comes, Ike does not want to go either. I'm Peter, we should get going. No. Oh. I have some chocolate. Chocolate! Oh, of course you'll leave your entire life behind for chocolate. Do you know that most chocolate contains trace insect parts and rodent hair, right? Now you know. Per Kyle, their home life has become unbearable. My mom just walks around the house like a zombie and my dad can't stop crying. Well, I didn't want to say anything, Kyle, but I think maybe this is what your family gets for being Jewish at Christmas time. At the town's annual tree lighting, Chef proposes an alternative to Christmas. The Brown Flowers could need money to appeal that case to the new Canadian Prime Minister. What if this Christmas, instead of buying presents, we all use that money to give to the Brown Flowers? It's great. I mean, all the kids hate it. Carmen especially. It wasn't enough for you people to kill Jesus. Now you have to kill Christmas too, huh? But it's much better than Garrison's proposal. How about we get rid of all the Mexicans? Question. Did anybody else want to see Ike's relationship with his birth parents? Or Ike exploring the rest of Canada? Because after he gets taken away, we don't see him until the end. I guess it would not really add anything, but it would still be fun to watch. Kyle and the boys venture to Canada, wanting to get home in time for Christmas, as he promised the boys, Cartman included. However, they get massively sidetracked, because Canada is some far away, mythical land, kind of like Missoula, Montana, or Gatlinburg. Along the way, they keep meeting people who insist the Prime Minister took away something they loved, be it horses, or wine, or butt stuff. Life just hasn't been the same since he made illegal. Well, come with us! Maybe you can ask him to take his ban away! Wait, what year was Florence v. Texas? 2003. And this episode came out in 2003? Everybody hates the Prime Minister. Everyone, except Scott. What the hell is going on? beloved Canadian lad. Hey, it was nice to see him around. And wow, his head looks weird. Maybe it's because he's a giant de- Aha! Uh -huh. Americans! I should have known. You think you're the police of the world. You think you own Canada. Well, you aren't welcome here. Eventually, they get to Ottawa, where they meet the new prime minister. And Ike and his birth parents conveniently happen to be there too. Kyle appeals to the new prime minister to return his brother to him. You're not the same blood, but I love my little brother. We've taken care of him because he needed us to. And that makes us more family than anything. The prime minister offers a rebuttal. That was a great speech, gang. But the answer is no. All of my new laws will stay in effect forever. To prove a point, he even kills Kenny. I said go! <laughs> Oh my god! They killed Kenny! Thankfully, there turns out to be a reason for this weird logic. Beyond the fact that this is Canada, the Prime Minister is not an elected official, he's Saddam Hussein, come to take over Canada once again. Get him! Uh, don't shoot! I want to negotiate! Because clearly, things did not work out well in heaven, and why go back to Detroit? With Saddam killed for likely the final time, sorry he doesn't appear after this episode, Ike's birth parents allow him to return home. Peter, would you like to go back to your home in Colorado? 
Unfortunately, they missed Christmas, and Cartman is once again pissed off. Come on! Come on! Wow, I really should have talked about this episode last month. There's no Mr. Hanky, so I did not. Anyhow, Ike would continue to diverge from his initial characterization of being a five-year-old infant, depending on the episode. Some episodes keep this intact. Occasionally, they explore Ike's Canadian side, or his smart side. Sometimes, Ike will become a super brainy little kid, to the point of ending up in kindergarten early. He was able to read to John Stein books in one day. Cookie Monster. And in another, he was able to use his smarts to become class president or even make a macaroni picture of the Last Supper. Cookie Monster. You don't make a macaroni picture of the Last Supper at a Jewish camp? But they're only human, so Kyle and Ike don't always agree on certain things. Regardless, sometimes Kyle is the only one who can help Ike, in spite of himself. In Miss Teacher Bing's a boy, oh god, Cartman is chosen as hallway monitor, and during a routine sweep, comes upon a note. I found this in the hallway. Apparently your student Ike has a crush on you. You got a crush on your teacher, brah? Keep it out of my hallway. Go with Christ. Here you go. Surprised that's the worst he's doing. Ike's teacher, Miss Stevenson, invites him outside to discuss what happened. Even though I do admire you, you are so smart and gifted, so mature for your age. I don't like medicine. It turns out Ike and Stevenson are having an affair. And not just an affair, but a full-on, passionate, cheesy rom-com wannabe affair. And it's so gross! This lady is committing statutory hot Cosby, even if she is so whack in the head that she thinks they're in slow Cosby. They're not. Ike made it no no. Still, they're able to keep it a secret, or at least attempt to. Ike is just a special assistant, and after school, he goes to Miss Stevenson's house for private tutoring. One day, Sheila makes Kyle pick up Ike early for a doctor's appointment, and walks in on an unholy sight. Oh god, I'm sorry! I didn't mean to- I, I was looking for my brother! Ew, 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 You're gonna burn in Scottsdale, you hot Cosby-ist. Miss Stevenson tries to persuade Kyle to see things her way. Is it so hard to believe that true love exists? This is nuts. Due to Ike's young age, he doesn't realize the severity of what's going on and thinks Kyle is a big killjoy. He tries to tell Sheila, but Ike makes it difficult for him by literally acting his age. Because to some degree, Ike and Miss Stevenson are having- Spider-Man! I'm Faith Man! Mom, I think maybe you should talk to Ike about love- Oh, Booby, Ike is much too young. Yeah, he's not 17. Lives with no other choice. Kyle goes to the cops under a pseudonym and tries to tell them what happened. I attend South Park Elementary, and one of the teachers is having sex <laughs> with a student. Oh my god! god. Hey, 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 this is terrible. Something important you must understand is South Park is satire, and they like to make fun of the worst parts of life, such as the double standards. One such double standard is relationships with massive age gaps or power imbalances. When a man takes advantage of a younger woman, it's wrong, and it's sick, and it's season two of Bojack Horseman. When a woman does it, most people don't see it that way, even if she's doing the exact same thing. It gets worse when when Kyle notes, Miss Stevenson is hotter than the Mojave Desert on an average Tuesday. But she's ugly, right? Well, no, not really. It's the kindergarten teacher, Miss Stevenson. The blonde? Yeah. Nice. Nice. What? So the police don't do anything about it, except congratulate Ike. You're right. We're sorry. This is serious. We need to track this student down and... Give him his luckiest boy in America medal right away. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to Cartman and tells him about what's going on. Like usual, Cartman does not give a crap until Kyle lets out that they're mucking around or doing something that rhymes with mucking in his hallway. Yeah, well now it's personal. The hallways are my jurisdiction. If there's a hallway infraction going on, they're gonna have to deal with the dog. His hallway? Nuh uh. This is something Cartman cannot stand for. Time to respect his authority. Hall infraction! Oh, uh, 
We were just heading back in. You got a hall pass, bro? Wait, I thought Cartman had a job like that back in the pre-movie seasons. I think it was the episode Chicken Lover. Doesn't matter, because they are going to pay. You like Bear Mace, Eyes Head? Bear Mace? You're going with Christ! Oh! One time I agree with Carmen. One time I've ever applauded him. Good thing that at this point, South Park has a woman principal. Not a strong woman though, but a female principal nonetheless. Miss Stevenson, you're having a relationship with this student? Yes, during class time without a hall pass. Yes, because if you're going to commit statutory hot Cosby, better have protection. Principal Victoria calls the cops on Miss Stevenson, who uses the Mel Gibson defense to get rehab instead of prison. I know my actions were wrong, but I cannot be fully to blame. You see, I am an alcoholic. Oh. You know, I'm surprised this works, considering how the whole town knows what kind of a person he is. <laughs> Ike is not happy that Kyle got his love bug arrested and tells him off. You are dead to me. I'm dead to you? You're dead to me, Kyle. <laughs> I can't help it, he's too cute. Miss Stevenson gets out of rehab and tells Ike that they should just run away to Milan and start over. Once again, Kyle has to get the cops involved, but this time he has his mama. <laughs> Are you going to do nothing? All right, all right, we'll make a report, Jesus. And better yet, he and Cartman are willing to team up if only this once. No, they haven't left yet. Their flight is tomorrow morning. How do you know that? I had Beth check out their Travelocity account. By doing so, Kyle will get his little brother back and Cartman will make an evil doer pay. Crisscross. On the other hand, at least Miss Stevenson is getting some form of karma. Ike, is that all you're gonna do is watch TV? I love TV. But what about me? I want to talk. Kyle and Cartman, and the cops, who for once are actually doing their jobs, track down Stevenson and Ike to the roof, where Stevenson decides to go with Plan B and commit not alive. Wait, what? It's all over, Ike. Milan, the house in Tuscany. They'll never let us be together. We have to go with the backup plan. Kyle tries to talk Ike down. Please, I know your first love seems like the only love, but trust me, it's not. You have so much life ahead of you. You need to have a life. Have fun. Then ruin it by having a serious relationship. And Ike seems so moved. Are you ready, my love? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh! I... You go, dude. Then there's dead celebrities. In 2009, there was a huge string of celebrity deaths during the summer hiatus, which the producers took note of, hence this episode. And wow, it's so weird rewatching this episode at 23, because I now recognize most of these people. One night, Ike walks in on his parents doing the nasty. Wouldn't be the first time. At least Sheila isn't sleeping with a UPS man. He claims he saw a ghost, but Gerald tells him to scram, because Gerald is father of the year. Oh, not this again. Ike, we are sick of you talking about ghosts. But Daddy, I saw that. No buts. Get back to your room right now and don't come out. You got it? Does he even know what show he's in? Everywhere, Ike starts to see the ghosts of dead celebrities. Not people, celebrities. They aren't human like us. Such as Billy Mays. Hi, Billy Mays here for Mega Scrub Cleanser. Oh, I loved his commercials. all of these people. Uh, you were a model in the 70s, uh, you did commercials, and you were in Danny Phantom. Like usual, Ike goes to his brother for help. Aww. Make him stop! Make him stop, Kyle! Ike is taken to a shrink in his little suit, where he confesses what's been bugging him. I promise not to tell anyone else. I see dead celebrities. 
What if the therapist is a celebrity too? Somebody check on Kelsey Grammer and David Hyde Pierce. Kyle calls the ghost hunters for help, but nothing happens except ruined underwear. Ah! Thanks to them, Ike goes insane balls and ends up in a coma at the local children's hospital. Well boys, little Ike is stable, but the celebrity ghosts appear to have sent him into some kind of coma. Whoa, whoa, wait, there really are ghosts? The hell have you been? But the case is handed off to another doctor, whose name I don't know, so for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna call her, I don't know, Zelda. So I'm going to hand this off to Dr. Phillips, who specializes in spooky things. The ghosts of these celebrities are deep unrest. Wasn't she in American Dad? Or at least a parody of her? Zelda gives her diagnosis. I believe these celebrity ghosts are still roaming the world, reaching out through the child, because they are lost in purgatory. Basically, the celebrities can't accept the fact that they died. And to top it off, for some reason, they can't move on. To them, the afterlife is like a plane that won't take off. Like being on an airplane that's waiting to take off, but you're still sitting at the gate. Oh no, they'll have to fly in coach like us poor people. Oh, the horror. However, they are all ready to move on. Except for one soul in particular. Now just admit you're dead and sit down! No, that's ignorant. I'm not dead. Holy crap, it's their neighbor, Mr. Jefferson. What is he doing with a bunch of dead celebrities? No, I just have a skin condition. Yeah, don't you remember? His nose fell off. Unable to accept the fact that he's dead, Michael Jackson takes over Ike's body and even kills Zelda. At least now the police can't arrest him for being a rich black man. Dan discovers the only way to make Michael Jackson move on is to give him what he wants. The ability to live out his dream of being a living white girl. No, really. Well, what the hell are we gonna do? Dress him up in a princess gown and, and parade him around like the parents of those awful child pageants? To this end, they enroll Michael Jackson in a child's beauty pageant. Michael says she just enjoys being a child. She loves to play and climb trees and thinks people who don't are ignorant. Ignorant. Oh, good thing Honey Boo Boo isn't there. She's only six, but she's already had three heart attacks, girlfriend. Her heart is sweeter than bacon, child. Michael Jackson seems to be doing just fine. But the two male judges are huge pervs who get arrested. And his chances just went out the window. So I guess his chances are kind of like Billie Jean's child, right? Thankfully, there is an out. The remaining judge is eating Chipotle. Do you know what this means she must be crapping blood like there's no tomorrow. She's like that statue of the Virgin Mary. Doesn't she watch those Billy Mays commercials? She needs Chipotle away. Chipotle away. Chipotle away. Okay. What if you didn't have to give it up? I think you and I might be able to help each other here today. The bribe works and Michael Jackson moves on. I feel like I'm finally at rest. I'm finally at rest. I'm free! Yay! Ike gets his body back, but Michael Jackson and the other celebrities do end up in hell. They don't care because at least they get to leave the plane. Unfortunately, hell is a towing gate. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Still, if this did not convince you, maybe something else will. In About Last Night, we find out that Ike is a conservative. Here, he's a McCain supporter, and a few years later, he was upset that Romney lost. And when he finds out Obama won, he tries to commit not a lie. I don't jump! You could really hurt your ankle or something! <laughs> At least he's got the spirit. Goodbye. No! Oh no, he fell! Kyle 
has to take his brother to the hospital because everybody else is partying like it's 1999. When they get there, it turns out Ike was overreacting on purpose. He's part of the heist to steal the Hope Diamond. His role was to fake their deaths. Ike? Boom, baby. Wow, good job, bro. Then there are the times that Ike X is a big motivator for his brother. In Cartoon Wars, Kyle doesn't think Family Guy is that big a deal. It's just a cartoon. Nowadays it is. And clearly, Kyle does not understand how his world works because he isn't a little cutie like Scott Malkinson. Until one night when bombs go off because Family Guy offended the wrong person. Are you sure this time? This isn't a joke, Kyle. Bombs have already gone off in six cities. In the struggle, they lose Ike. Oh no, where can he be? Ike! 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 Ice cream and chocolate. This kid is gonna die eating chocolate. I'm telling you right now. Thankfully, it was all a dream. <laughs> Then there's Taming Strange, where Kyle and Ike's bond is put to the test. Lately, Ike has been acting like a D-word to Kyle. Sheila says it's just a part of growing up. The reason Ike is going through puberty, you know, despite being like five. And I warn you, it's a graphic sight. Like usual, he isn't just going through puberty, but Canadian puberty. Meaning he's a walking, talking toddler who loves Nick Jr., but has a deep urge to tame Strange and pop his zits. Hey, Ike, how's it going? Get out of my room, Kyle! I'm on my computer! Ew, he looks like a talking everything bagel. Actually, he was originally meant to look even worse, so this is a blessing. Kyle suggests they watch Yo Gabba Gabba. God, I'm old. I still remember when the show came out, and I knew none of the celebrities. Go, go, Tootie! Come on, let's dance! Ruby. Dancey Dance is my favorite! Also, fun fact, Bill Hader guest starred in Yo Gabba Gabba. Yeah! Hey! Hey, everybody! Hi! Hi. I'm Bill! I only point this out because he was one of the producers on South Park, and for this episode, he had to help explain to Trey Parker what Yo Gabba Gabba even was. Plus, he voices Plex in this episode, not in real life. It is never okay to take off your clothes and grind on another person. No, that's wrong! Oh. Ike especially loves Yo Gabba Gabba because he loves Fufa, wanting to tame her strange, what? And he's developed a new habit, chewing tobacco. Come on. I don't even know what the f Muno is. I think Muno is supposed to be a schlong. Like a schlong with like warts all over it. Oh, come on. What are you, Georgia O'Keefe? Fufa's obviously a flower. Put your minds in the gutter. Kyle tries to help Ike by showing him a video of Canadian puberty. But when that doesn't work, he decides to take him to Yo Gabba Gabba Live. Unfortunately, Mr. Mackey has no idea how technology works. Wait for Zoom. And Ike is disappointed. You just love pushing me around. Is that what you want to do, Kyle? Kick the baby? Well, I'm ready, bro. Come on, Kyle. Kick the baby. Kick the f baby. Let's see you try it, wuss. This gets to Kyle, who is able to somehow pull the two of them out of school. They never say how. I assume Kyle just went to Principal Victoria and explained the situation. Did Yo Gabba Gabba live? It's time for a cool, cool trick. Like a charcoal, Ike cut some kid in line. And what's your name, little boy? Ike Rothwoski. Do you have a cool trick? Yeah, for my cool, cool trick, I'm gonna tame Fufa Strange. Oh god, you're not gonna do what I think you're gonna do. I no stop! Oh, I see. You're actually. Wait! Oh my god! What are you doing? No, no, no! What are you doing to Fufa? No! I no! That's hot Cosby. That's wrong. Oh, do uh, it. Uh. We're so sorry. Please forgive my little brother. He's going through puberty. Hey, at least by doing this, I got to meet his idols. However, his actions get to Fufa, who thinks she should do more than just be a children's entertainer. An artist! And if all I ever do is play to kids, then I'll be a joke! I have to move on! Oh, it's Miley Cyrus. 
or I guess since they're making fun of Nick, Ariana Grande. With Egg as her manager, Fupa makes headlines as a star with an attitude for showing off her curves. Fufa's got that nice shave strand that you just want to get in and tame the second you see it. So Fufa is also supposed to be Kesha. Fufa gets to be so popular that she's going to perform at the VMAs. Oh, I went last year. If you're in the pit, you can have your cell phone for like 10 hours. The Yo Gabba Gabba team comes over to Kyle's house to convince her to stop this, but she refuses. You won't listen to us, but maybe you'll listen to our special guest, Sinead O'Connor! Yay! 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 Don't do it, Fufa. Come on, Fufa. Do what Sinead never could. Perform on SNL and fight the real enemy. Now, I'm sure you're curious about why Ike is going through puberty at such a young age. True, precocious puberty is a thing, but it's practically unheard of. Ike should be a medical marvel. If not, you're probably gonna say, Oh, well, kitty, Ike is Canadian. He's just going through puberty differently. Yeah, no. See, the Canadian government has centralized healthcare, which Ike took advantage of because he's from there. He had a constipation problem and has been prescribed a daily laxative. Too bad that, like Mr. Mackey, Canada uses Intel a link. See, it's so terrible, I can't even pronounce it right. Instead of getting his proper medication, he's been getting hormones that were meant to go to Tom Brady. Not sure what his problem has Blue been lately. Yeah, definitely not looking as strong and virile as he has Blue in the past, Tom. Hot, hot. Whoa, that's the spice. A spice melange. Ike is the reason for the spice melange. I guess Sheila's fecal transplant was karma. At the VMAs, Fufa is about to perform when Kyle comes bursting in with the cast of Yo Gabba Gabba. But with no other option, Kyle tries a heartfelt plea. And even when I'm 50 and you're 45, you're still gonna be my little brother. I don't care if you wanna grow up. I just want to be by your side while you do it. Ike realizes he has a point. He's right, Foof. Part of growing up is rebelling, but I'm going to get older whether I like it or not. So why push it? I think I'm just going to let it happen naturally. Too bad Foofa is not Ike. Still, the mix-up is cleared, and Ike, like usual, is back to normal. He's even willing to watch Dora the Explorer with Kyle. We made it all the way to the top. Oh man, I wouldn't mind hitting that. I bet he's got that hot Puerto Rican strange. Oh, at least he's close to back to normal. Finally, I will end the video on a hopeful note with the episode Royal Pudding. Ugh, there goes the Canada episode. I mean... Well, I could always make a South Park Canada video, just not have it be about Ike. In the episode, Ike is due to star in the Book of Mormon. No wait, the woman in white. Ugh, cried on a stick. He's supposed to be in a play about oral hygiene. I don't think it's ever given a title. Or he was until the royal wedding happened. The Canadian royal wedding. People are still filing inside the Abbey to watch the Prince and Princess of Canada exchange their vows. Hey, at least it's not the British royal wedding where you gotta wake up at 6 a.m. to watch it. During the wedding, something bad happens. The bride gets abducted by a giant cube in the sky. Oh, what a harsh break in tradition. What a terrible, bad day for Canada and, of course, the world. <laughs> Ike is devastated, and he can't even perform in the play. No, no, tooth decay. Your character is supposed to be mean and nasty, okay? Not crying. Oh, come on, cut the kids some slack. Things get worse as the rest of Canada mourns the princess, even if she isn't technically a princess because she only got as far as the altar. The princess is gone! The Canadian government tells all able-bodied Canadians to open up their box of faith. Box of faith? What the f*** is that? Which explains to them that in order to help the royal family, they must go to the tree in Edmonton. In your box of faith, you will find all the items you need. A location beacon, a first aid kit, and a sandwich. You may eat the sandwich now. That sandwich is probably hella moldy. He gets ready to make the journey. I got to get to Canada and, and join the 
armies and save the princess. You know, I'm surprised South Park has yet to make an episode on Megan and Harry. Hey, I admire them and I love Megan's wardrobe, but I want to see what the show would do with them. I think it goes without saying that Kyle loves his brother so much that just for him, he's going to take over as Tooth Decay. It clearly has nothing to do with the fact that Mr. Mackey screamed in his face. Well, couldn't you, you know, just get rid of the part of Tooth Decay? Getting rid of Tooth Decay is what I'm trying to f do! He's your brother, Kyle Broblowski, okay? How are you going to fix this? Well, Mackie, if the role of Tooth Decay is so damn important, why didn't you have an understudy or a standby? There's a difference. But Mackie does not care. He just wants the play to go off without a hitch. You call rolling your fat ass out on the stage and lazily blurting out your lines like a turtle taking a shit? You call that trying? Ike makes it to Canada, where the Canadians believe the kidnapper is the giant, aka Scott, who is now above average size because of radiation poisoning in Ottawa. As he explains, he did not do it. I'm also the biggest Canadian patriot of all of you. You know that I would never harm the royal family. Ah, oh, crap. Sorry, everyone. Looks like we had some bad intel. So Ike, Scott, and Ugly Bob, who is still wretchedly ugly, travel to save the princess, who is being held captive by Tooth Decay. I should have always brushed and flossed and avoided sweets! But you're rich, or at least going to be. Couldn't you just use teeth whitening strips? Thanks to Ike, Tooth Decay is turned to stone, and Mr. Mackey's father, Mackey Sr., is avenged! Princess, look away! Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the reason Mr. Mackey is acting like a butthole is because the play has a special connection to him. Two years ago, I lost my father to Tooth Decay. My whole family watched as Tooth Decay took him in the blink of an eye. And when he finds out Tooth Decay can't hurt anyone ever again, he's practically overjoyed. Up in the Yukon, all bureaus are confirming it. You can let it go, Mackey. Tooth Decay is gone. <laughs> For his bravery, Ike is made a knight in Canada, which is about on the same level as being den leader in Girl Scouts. But the princess gives him free kisses and a pair of socks, as of course is tradition, and the day is saved! Well, that's Kyle, his brother Ike, and their relationship. In many ways, the two seem like typical siblings. However, their bond goes deeper than that. Kyle has gone to hell and back for his brother. They're practically a team. And I will say, it's also cool to see a bond between two adopted brothers. Ike and Kyle don't share any blood. Thank God, can you imagine him being Jerseyan, Jewish, and a daywalker? But sometimes family isn't about whose blood you share, it's about the people who care about you. And I think Kyle and Ike exemplify that really well, even if they don't always get along. Huh, I think I'm forgetting a Brofwoski, but who could it be? I already made a video on Sheila, and I might make one on Gerald. Plus, I just finished the video. I did! Oh god no, end the video, end it now, please!